All right, welcome. Um, my name is Hallie Kirk and I'm a specialist in ISD. I'm usually working with the SALTA program and the ML program. And this is, go ahead and. Hi, I'm Leslie Romnett. I'm officially the letters coordinator, but I also work on the um, extended learning opportunities with the ELA team. All right, and we are here today to talk to you a little bit about the extended learning opportunities that we have available um, within English language arts. And... Okay, there we are. <laughs> Okay, so uh, before we begin, just some of our norms, um, this should be familiar to you. We just ask that you be committed to learning and respectful of other people's ideas, and that should do it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is our um, MTSS framework, and today we'll be working primarily in the blue area, which is our high quality academic and behavioral instruction and intervention. Um, as this is a piece of curriculum and instruction. And today's learning intentions and success criteria um, for our learning intentions. By the end of our session today, we hope that you will understand the opportunities for extending learning in ELA that are supported by our district and be able to support your students in extending their learning with opportunities that are provided by the district. And you'll know you have it when your students participate in our ELOs this year. So we have three um, ELOs or extended learning opportunities that we'll be talking to you about today. Those are Story Fest, Speech, and Debate. And it's really important when we're looking at the extended learning opportunities that you know that they are integrated with our standards, um, our speaking and listening standards, reading informational text, being able to write um, opinion, or which is argumentative, but for elementary grades would be opinion, and being able to write um, expository text. So you're really teaching your standards through these extended opportunities. Okay. And the first one we're going to talk about is Story Fest. Uh, we've done Story Fest in some form for all of our years as a district, except for last year, COVID kind of uh, put a dent in a lot of the things that we have done in the past, but we're excited to get back to offering it this year. And Story Fest is an event where students get to uh, show their love of literature and experience literature and the arch, arts <laughs> and the oral tradition of storytelling. So students find a story any story that they like. It could be one you introduce them to, or it could be one that they know from their own personal life, and they will retell the story. And it helps them develop those presentation skills, get their confidence, and increase their ability to speak public publicly. We divide our story fest into two separate evenings just for a student development. Um, it's easier for them to be grouped with students who are like likewise um, developed. So our younger kids, our K2 students will compete together, and then our 3-5 students compete together. There will be two separate days. However, we uh, don't have those dates yet. We do know that they'll be in the spring. We're just waiting for confirmation on rooms and whatnot, and we'll send out a flyer with that confirmation as soon as we have it. But you can prepare all of your students. Any teacher can prepare their students or encourage their students. Just a few rules. They must be told from memory and not read aloud. So your students would just wanna read through it a few times so that they know the general idea of the story. It should not be memorized. It should be up to them to fill in what's coming next based on they know the organization. They may be told individually or in a duo. No groups larger than two. And biggest reason for that is somebody always gets left out. If there are two people, it can be about evenly divided. Uh, it is recommended that before you go into a group, the kids have done it before because it's a lot harder to play off of somebody or rely on somebody to do their part if they don't have experience. All the stories should be three to six minutes long and present presentation time and scoring does end at the maximum of six minutes. So kids should practice being able to finish for that six minutes. No props or costumes are allowed. So everything needs to be conveyed through their voice and their actions. And it can be any time of story. It should be published, 
but it could be a folk tale, a fairy tale, a myth, legend, fable, or tall tale. And it is important that uh, the kids tell it the way they hear it, so through their own perspective. So we would expect to hear, while we would expect to hear some vocabulary from the story, we would also expect to hear some of the children's unique or some of the vocabulary that they're used to in their everyday life. So we would be able to hear both. Uh, preparing for Story Fest, we would strongly encourage you to maybe try it in class. And uh, we would encourage you to, if you're the first one from your school ever trying it, just try a class one or maybe in your team or maybe convince your school to hold a night. There are fun nights to invite parents uh, if you do a school night or even send a link home if you do an in-class one and provide all of your kids an opportunity to try it before the district festival. And what we usually say is for each school and grade to send three to five students. So if you're the only teacher from your school, send us five. If there are, uh, if your whole school's trying it, send us your top five with a few alternates and sometimes those alternates are able to get in. All right, um, another extended learning opportunity that we have available is our speech competitions. Um, for elementary, in the winter, we have a virtual competition that is being held. Um, students will record their speeches on a flip grid and then it will be evaluated by our speech um, team here in ISD. And then we also have our district championships and our state championships, which would be in the spring. These are opportunities open to all fourth and fifth grade students, um, and you do need to qualify for that district tournament. Or the state tournament. Or the, yes, the state one, not the district one. And similar to um, Story Fest, we ask that if you're, you know, if you're in a classroom and you're the only one in your school who is doing speech that maybe you send your top three or five candidates. If your whole school does a speech competition for fourth and fifth grade, then maybe you would take those top three to five students. Um, really, we just um, encourage you to try it. So with your speech competitions, um, just like we said earlier, it is aligned with your standards. So often in fourth and fifth grade, when students are writing informational essays or they're writing opinion essays, this is a really nice extension to allow for an authentic audience. So they'd really just be taking something, a topic of interest, their um, topic gets to be chosen by them, and then they memorize that speech. So I think that's on the next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are two different types. We've got our original oratory, which is really more persuasive. Opinion is what we refer to it as in elementary. And then our expository informational type speech. So really either of those modalities of um, your speaking and listening as well as your reading and writing. And the rules for speech is that the speech is four minutes in length, um, that the student has memorized it. They are allowed one three by five index card to kind of keep their talking points organized or add some any hints and cues that they might need. Um, that is their original work, so it's their writing, and they're, they're the one doing the speaking, and then they cite the sources that they use um, in their speech. And here we have a couple, these are hyperlinked, um, some tips and tricks for being able to help support your students and being successful in their speech competition. And you're also always welcome to reach out to either of us, um, and we can help you do that. And then the evaluation of this speech, this is the rubric that they would be evaluated on. And as we said earlier, that our ISD um, debate team would be going through the flip grids and using this rubric to evaluate and provide feedback for participants. And here is just a great um, list of resources that we have for speech and debate as well, which Leslie will be talking about in just a moment and as well as samples, um, some teacher facing tools for how to plan, how to build it into your day, um, speech delivery tips. So some really great resources that you can check out. Awesome. Um, before we move on to debate, I would just add really quick, uh, with the speech 
the topic that could be anything of your kids choosing. So if you've prepared something for class along a similar topic and they're all the same topic, that's fine. But also if you want to give them some independent work, like you've got kids that are advanced that can work more independently, they can pick any topic of their choice or especially with our virtual competition, you can just send home the opportunity for them and let them prepare it on their own. So uh, there is a Canvas link, it is hyperlinked on there. It's a Canvas, a self-enrolled Canvas page that is hyperlinked on that Canvas, on the speech competition page. Thank you. <laughs> and then the last uh, ELO, Extended Learning Opportunity, that we offer is debate. And we kind of look at it as Story Fest kind of builds up to speech, and speech kind of builds up to, to debate just in the strength of the skills. They all require presentation skills. They all require public speaking. They all require some self-confidence and posture and knowledge of the material. But debate would be that uh, even more thorough application in that the kids are now going to have to respond to each other. You know, in speech, they present their speech and they're done. And it doesn't um, matter what the other kids do or how they performed or what they said. But in debate, there is that back and forth. So what we offer for our elementary, it's called a public forum format in which two person pro con teams debate a topic that's usually based on current events. And they should use their logic, evidence, and speaking skills to persuade a judge. And there is a time structure. So your kids would prepare for either pro or con, but you'd prepare about half your class for pro and about half for con. Uh, we, offer, we offer as a district one opportunity, and that's our district championships, which is at the end of April, April 27th, and you have to qualify at that tournament to go to the state tournament. And again, this is for fourth and fifth grade students. And much like speech and story fest, we'd encourage you to try it with your class and then send your top five, either from your uh, per grade, we, we'd like to get a good mix of fourth and fifth grade. So from your grade or from your um, team, if both or all three of the teachers from your team want to try it, send us a mix. But also we ask you to list alternates so that we can keep our numbers up. So we encourage you to try it and we'll send more information about how to register as it gets close. The topic, which changes every year based on current events, but the topic for this spring is resolved that the benefits of outer space exploration outweigh the harms. So the kids are going to out just debate half of them will debate whether space exploration is good and the other half will say whether it's more harmful than good and so i think kids will be excited about this but also have some science application for our fourth and fifth graders so that'll be a nice little cross-curricular topic uh, just a couple of hints for preparing for a debate divide your class in half because you'll want to have half prepare for the pro half prepare prepare for the con Really have them prepare for both sides of the topic. So start some whole class discussions about what's beneficial about the topic, what's uh, negative about the topic. Then have them divide into sides and research and write arguments for their side. Have them practice how to do a rebuttal, which is responding to what the other people might say. And then plan how to argue what the other team might say. And those are some of the things I would do to prepare before trying a debate. And you can do that on the topic of space exploration, or if you want to introduce it with a little more scaffolding, you can do the same format with any topic like Coke is better than Pepsi or uh, schools should wear uniforms. So you can pick a topic that's easier for the kids to relate to without research to practice and then do the formal topic or you can just jump right into the formal topic depending on what time you have or how how your kids respond and how much scaffolding they need so again hallie has taught uh debate and speech in the school so if you have any questions about what it looks like in your class you can reach out to hallie or if you have any questions about the resources or the events reach out to me reach out to either of us we do try to provide a lot of resources. So there are a bunch, as Hallie showed on the ISD webpage, including videos. So if you've never seen a speech event or there's a, a video of a debate too, you can see what it would look like to know um, if you're doing it right or have a good idea when you're teaching your kids, as well as outlines and 
written speeches. So what would a, a oratory look like? There are a few examples. So there are lots of examples there. And then the Utah Debate Coaches Association webpage has more examples also from people outside of the district. So if you want to see what other elementary teachers from around the state are doing, you can check out their web page right there. All right. Well, we hope some of you will try our uh, extended learning opportunities. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact either of us. And we hope to see some entries, especially in our speech event here soon. Thanks. All right. Thank you.